All right, in this video, we're going to finish up this practice test and do the remaining questions in the test. So starting with number 31, we have a couple of buildings that are um, similar, and the similarity means that they are proportional, and the test actually gives the proportion that they want you to solve. So we can figure out the answer by cross multiplying and when you cross multiply especially in this particular example I want to make sure that you use parentheses since some of our parts here are um, binomials and then when you use parentheses that will help you to remember that you need to distribute that number to both of the things inside of the parentheses. So my first term is 12x plus 60 and on the right I have 16x plus 48. And you can solve this by subtracting 12x from both sides. and subtracting 48 and then dividing both sides by 4 so x is equal to 3 and then just do make sure once you solve for x that you go back and make sure that you're answering the question as it's been asked Alright, in question number 32, it looks like we have another cross-multiplication problem. So, when you cross-multiply, you're going to get um, 8x, because 2 times 4x is 8x. And on the right side, don't forget, because you're, you've got a binomial that you want to use um, parentheses. And now I'm going to distribute the 3. And so I get 3x minus um, 42. And then subtract. Subtract 3x from both sides. And then finally divide both sides by 5. So I would get x equals negative 42 divided by 5. And you can put that into your grid. Or if you really want to, you can put also in, you could put in negative 8.2. But just note that this, changing it to a decimal by performing the division is really just one extra step. So I probably would have left it as negative 42 over 5. Alright, so number 33, that's one of those ones that we are going to skip. Number 34 should look familiar. We know that we're looking at the graph to determine first probably if it's a smile or a frown. And in this case, because the coefficient of x squared is positive, it's going to be a smile. So I'm going to eliminate um, this choice and this choice. So now I have to decide if it is, um, let's look at the, the middle. The middle of this one is right here at x equals 1. And the middle of the other one is over here at x equals negative 1. I think we actually did this one in class. 
from the other practice test. But just as a reminder, oops, the way that you'll figure out which axis of symmetry it is, is you're going to use the axis of symmetry formula, which is um, x equals negative b over 2a. And in our problem, a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 8. So when I plug into the axis of symmetry formula, I get um, x equals negative 2 over 2 times 1. So that's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So that tells us right there that our answer has got to be choice C. Okay, number 35, um, and I know we've seen this one before as well. Uh, the question is, um, what's the water balloon's height? What can we say is true about the water balloon? Is it true that the water balloon reaches a maximum height of 16 meters? And so I look here at 16, oops. 16, and the parabola doesn't get quite that tall, so that's that wouldn't be it. Um, does the water balloon reach a height of 7.85 meters twice? So I, I kind of like draw a line through the height at 7.85, which is actually down here a little bit more. And actually it hits it here, and it hits it here at 7.85, so this one might be good, but just to double check the rest of the choices, is the maximum height 17.15 meters. That's way up here. So I'm going to say no, the, the parabola never got that tall, so that's not it. And does the balloon travel for 4.9 seconds before it hits the ground? Well, the range on this, it goes up to 3.53 seconds, so that's not enough. And so that does indicate that my thinking about choice B was correct. Alright, so now we're going to factor this one. This is a yesterday's news kind of problem, so we're just going to go ahead and, and factor it out. There's no slip and slide because there's no number in front of x squared. So it's going to be x in the first spot. The second sign tells me that the signs inside are plus and minus, and I'm looking for factors of 8 that give me 2. So that would be um, positive 4 and negative 2. Gives a positive 2. And so I can see that as one of my choices right here at C. Okay, for number 37, we are... Um, thinking about this question, it says, what is the total elapsed time from the time the ball is kicked until it reaches ground level again? So you have to know about what it means to be at ground level. The height at ground level is equal to zero. And in our equation, the height is given in terms of y. So basically you're going to be letting y equal 0 and solving. When I do solve, I am going to think about the GCF, which would be, let's see, the GCF would be eight X. That's like, I guess eight X. I could get out of both this one and that one. So I'm going to pull an eight X out. I'm still keeping it in equation form. And when I pull it out, I'm really dividing each term. So 40 X divided by eight X is five minus uh, 16 divided by eight is two and X squared divided by eight by X is just X. So I've just factored that right side and now I'm going to set my factors equal to zero. So
So here, x equals 0, and here, 5 is equal to 2x, divide both sides by 2, x is equal to 2.5. So if I think about this in terms of the problem, it says, what is the total elapsed time in seconds from the time the ball is kicked until it reaches the ground level again? So this uh, solution refers to when the ball was kicked. This one is going to refer to when it hits ground level again. So that's going to be my answer, 2.5. Okay, number 38. All right, so for number 38, we are looking at um, the number of elements in the cross product, so T, T cross with a Z. And I noticed that in T there are one, two, three, four problems. By problems, I mean elements in the set. And in Z, there are one, two, three elements in that set. And to cross them and figure out how many there are, you just multiply. So it's going to be 4 times 3 for a total of 12. All right, number 39. What you need to know for this is the difference between the union and the intersection. So the union, just a reminder, is the U. And that is the one that, um, this is the one that goes from, that you get things from either set. The intersection is the and, oops. Hang on. I don't know what happened there. All right, so let me go back. So we got the union, which is, um, elements that show up in either set and the intersection is the elements that show up in both sets. So first work inside your parentheses here, K union with P, that's going to be um, something that shows up in either set. So K and union with P is going to be 2, 10, that actually shows up in both. 11, 14, and 18. So these are all of the elements that show up in both sets. All right, so I have to be honest. My family's over here thinking that it's very funny to make snoring noises in the background. Not cool. Anyway, so I've got K, union with P, and then those are my elements, and now I'm going to intersect it with uh, set D, which is right here. So now I'm looking for the things that are both in K union P, which I just calculated right here, and also in here. So that would be um, 2 shows up in both, 5 does not, 6 does not, 8 does not, 10 shows up in both, 11 shows up in both, and that's it. So that's my, that's my um, entire expression, 2, 10, and 11. And the question is, what is the greatest age in that set? So my answer actually would be 11. All right, so we have this Venn diagram problem, and we are looking for all of the elements that are not in R. So not in R would be... Um, not in R is equal to uh, all of the elements that are outside of circle R. So that would be K, M, N, J, H, I. Um, and when I cross that with uh, S, and this is going to be the one that is in both. So here's my S element. And that would be um, the ones that are in both are just these th these this group here. So this would be K M 
N, and J. Now, that's this whole part. I'm going to go over to the other side and calculate not T. So not T would be um, everything outside of T, so all of this stuff, and um, S. So it's got to be in not T, but also in S, and so that would be this section. So that's going to correspond to... Um, this one here, D, K, M, and N. And now, finally, I'm going to join those two by saying I want the ones that are in either set. So that would be um, D, uh, K, J, K, M, N. That's everything that's in both sets. And so that's choice B. Okay, the number of kids on number 41 who did not participate in basketball, that's going to be all of these kids outside, or outside of the volleyball, rather. Outside of volleyball, that's everybody in that set. So that's um, 9 and 11 is 20 plus 15 gives a total of 35. And looks like that's it. So all 41 questions.